Sunday. Very good. It's not Sunday. Girls, you better know what today is because it's a birthday in your house. Well, Tuesday. What, Tuesday. Vanessa Tuesday. has a little brother this morning who now shares a birthday with you. Her birthday was Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday. Your birthday, Her birthday was your, last Tuesday. Not today. Your birthday was last Tuesday, 22nd. But still, happy birthday, Aria. Seven years old. All right, so today is Sunday. Who knows what month we are in? April. 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 June. Oh, you're so funny. July. You're August. so funny. I wish. Yeah, you wish. Right. What day? July. What day? Monday. 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 I wish. We are going to be learning out of second. Those of you who have your Bibles. Those of you who have your Bibles, we're going to be in Second Kings. Chapter 2. And we're going to learn about two people whose names are real close to each other. Now, we got two people in this room that have names that are real close to each other. We got Eric and we got Eric. And it's hard to tell them apart, right? Hard to tell them apart. Eric A and Eric Y, right? No. Eric A and Eric Y. Is that right? All right. Eric's looking at me like, boy, you better be right. But these two, the one was a prophet of God and his name was Elijah. And he had a trainee. He had a student. All right, guys, settle down now. Nope, that's Judges. You gotta keep going farther back this way till you see Second Kings. Keep going farther back. Yep, you got it. Second Kings chapter two. Uh, you're in Deuteronomy. You gotta keep going back farther. Best thing to do is look in the front of the Bible here. It's got the list of all the books and it tells you what page to find it on. And. Okay, Elijah was the teacher, and his student's name was Elisha. Elijah and Elisha. Now, I know people who, when they talk, they don't really say their names too, uh, uh, too clearly. They don't say the words too clearly. And they say, Elijah, Elijah. Well, who are we talking about, Elijah or Elisha? Okay, I need you two to pay attention. Leave, your, leave the sticker alone. Elijah was the teacher. Elisha was the student. Now, how did these two meet? Those of you who were here last week, do you remember how did they meet? Anybody, anybody want a chance to guess at it? Elijah was farming and Elijah walked up to him and put his coat on him. That's right. Why was Elijah in the neighborhood? To annoy Elisha. He was to annoy Elisha? How did, who told him to do that? God. Where did God tell him to do that? While Elisha was farming. While Elisha was farming? Well, where was Elijah when God told him to do that? On a mountain. On a mountain? Okay. You can, okay. Keep going. And why was he on the mountain? Because he was running away and he thought that no one else believed in God. Exactly. Did you catch that, Josiah? Elijah had just had a big victory over false prophets. And he, he won. God proved himself that he was God. And after the prophets were defeated and they said to kill all the false prophets. And when the queen found out about it, does anybody remember what the queen's name was besides Kaya? Does anybody? Hadassah? Jezebel? Jezebel was a very wicked queen. She was a very evil woman. And 
when she heard what happened to the false prophets, and they were the guys that she liked, and she said to Elijah, or she sent a message to Elijah, and she said, if you are alive tomorrow morning, may the gods do the same to me. In other words, I'm going to kill you. You made, you uh, arranged for my prophets to be killed, and now I'm going to kill you. Elijah had just had this big victory, and you know what he did after he had that big victory and then found out that he was going to get killed for it? He ran. He turned his tail and he ran. He ran for his life. You see, because the devil had told a lie to Elijah. He said, you're the only one. He said, you're the only one. Nobody believes in God like you do. Nobody else serves God except you. You're all alone. The devil will tell you that. You're all alone. Nobody understands you, Eric. Nobody understands what you're thinking. You're all... There's nobody to help you. You're all alone. That's what the devil is going to tell you. You know what? You know how you know when the devil's lying? His lips are moving. In other words, if he's talking, he's lying. Because that's all he does. The Bible says he's the father of lies. That's all he does. So when you hear something in your ear, and it doesn't agree with the word of God, that's the devil talking to you, and he's lying. And you know what you can say about the devil? He's ugly, and his mama dresses him funny. Uh -huh. <laughs> He, that's, that's exactly it. But he lied to Elijah. And he said, you're the only one. Nobody understands you, Elijah. Nobody. You're all alone. Everybody's turned aside after false gods except you. And you don't have a chance. And it's not true. But Elijah ran. He ran for his life. He believed the lie. And he ran for his life. And he went down to Mount Sinai and he goes up Mount Sinai and he says, God, nobody loves me. God, I'm all alone. Kill me, God. Just kill me. Okay. <laughs> and you know what God said? Okay. Nothing. All of a sudden came a great windstorm. And the rocks blew over and split. But God wasn't in that windstorm. And then an earthquake. But God was not in the earthquake. And then a fire. And God was not in the fire. Guys. 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 Hands to yourself. And all of a sudden, after all that commotion, a little voice. Elijah, what are you doing here? Don't you think God would know the answer to that question? Don't you think he, Don't you think God knows the answer to that question? Yes. There's a saying in the court with lawyers and all that, and Miss Faith and I have that saying with Elizabeth too. You never ask a question you don't already know the answer to. You see, when God asked the question of Elijah, he already knew what the answer was because God knows everything. God knows what your heart is thinking. God knew that Elijah had believed a lie and was there because he was afraid for his life. But Elijah poured out his heart to God. They've killed all your prophets. And I'm the only one left. Oh! I'm the only one left. There's nobody else. Kill me, God. Do it. And you know what God said? Okay. Elijah, you're not the only one. I can show you a thousand others that haven't bowed the knee to the false gods. All right. Come. Now. 
your chair. God said, you're not the only one. You see, God didn't listen to Elijah's pity party. He said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go anoint Hazael to be the next king of Syria. I want you to anoint Jehu to be the next king of Israel. And I want you to anoint Elisha to be the prophet after you. You're getting a student. And as Elijah went walking, and God showed him where to go, and he saw Elisha in the field. And back then, the prophets would have this uh, cloak or an overcoat. It was a symbol of God's anointing. And he took that and he threw it over Elisha's shoulders. And Elisha knew exactly what that meant. That meant he was being called to be a prophet. Now, Elisha could have said, hey, but I'm, a, I'm just a farmer. I'm just a farmer. You know what? I don't have a degree in Bible studies. I don't have a degree in teaching. I'm just a computer guy. My dad was a pastor. He didn't have a degree in ministry. He was just an electrician. He worked with electrical things. Pastor Craig, he, was, he studied to be an accountant. He wanted to be an accountant, work with money and work with figures. But you see, when God calls you, it doesn't matter what you're doing. When God calls you, it's time to go. And Elisha said, Elijah, please let me say goodbye to my family. And Elisha said, absolutely, go ahead. Because Elisha knew that his life was about to change. And he went back and he made a feast for all his family and friends. And then he followed Elijah. And what wonderful things. Now the Bible doesn't mention Elisha again for a long time. But what wonderful things that he had seen. He saw Elijah tell a king, Hey, you had a man killed so that you can, uh, so that you can take his vineyard. God's going to judge you for that. He saw, the, he saw Elijah say to another king, Hey, you got sick. Instead of asking God to heal you, you went after false gods. That was wrong for you to do. And you know, the king, when he heard that word, he decided that he was going to send people to capture Elijah and bring him back. Elijah was up on top of a mountain. He said, and the, so the soldier came with 500 soldiers with him. He said, come on down. Man of God, come on down. He was disrespecting them. And Elijah said, if I'm a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and kill you and your men. And immediately fire came down. And he sent a second with his group. Man of God, come on down. If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and kill you and all of your men with you. And fire came down from heaven. These are the things that Elisha saw. The third time, this time the guy came, he said, oh, please have mercy on me and have mercy on my men. Please come down. Different attitude. Different attitude. He was respectful. And God said to Elijah, go with him. Elisha saw all these things, but finally, and this is where we pick up our story, finally, it came time for Elijah to go away. Now, there are only two people recorded in the entire Bible who never died. Two people who never died. The first was a man named Enoch. And Enoch... He said, the Bible says, that, this is in Genesis, and the Bible says that he walked with God, and God was pleased with him, and God took him home. He never had to die. Elijah was the other one. And as we pick up here with our story here, God was going to take Elijah to heaven, and Elijah and Elisha were in a city called Gilgal. Elijah told Elisha, stay there, for the Lord was calling him to go to Bethel. Elisha said, uh-uh, uh-uh, I'm never going to leave you. I'm not leaving you. And so they both went to Bethel. 
at Bethel, the sons of the prophets came to Elisha and he said, do you know, are you aware that today God is going to take your master away? Would you like to be moved? Your attention needs to be up here. Leave Kaylee alone. Did you know that God is going to take your master away? He said, yeah, I know. Just don't, don't say anything about it. Everybody seemed to know what was going on. Why is that? Do you know what a prophet is? Is now we say a man of God. Let me separate that out a little. A uh, man of God. But let me tell you something. It's not limited to the boys. It's not limited to men. Did you know that you could be a prophet of God? God can put His Spirit in you. You could be a prophet of God. He put His Spirit in you. You could be a prophet of God. You put a spirit in you. 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 And I'm not leaving the boys. You. And I'm not leaving the boys out either. You. 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 Did you know that you're not too young to prophesy? Did you know that? You're not too young. If God wants to say something through you, listen and say it. God will be with you. But a prophet had two, there were two things that a prophet would do. Does anybody remember what they are? Does anybody but Hadassah remember what they are? No. You want to give it a try, Favor? What was one of the things that a prophet did? Actually, that, was, that really wasn't what a prophet did. Hadassah and Kaya? Okay. Hadassah, give me one. He told the future. A prophet could tell the future. Do you know why he could tell the future? So that way he could do, you know, do you know why a prophet could tell the future? Because God knows the future. When a prophet told the future, he didn't tell it out of his own power. If there are people that are telling you that I know how to tell the future, they're lying to you. Because if you ask a prophet, do you know how to tell the future, the prophet will tell you no. The only reason a prophet can tell the future is because God tells the prophet what is going to happen. And then the prophet tells us. Kaya, what's the other one? Can tell secrets. Tell secrets. And there are people out there, they call themselves fortune tellers, and they claim to be able to tell the secrets in your life. And they'll tell you something so broad and general, and people go, ooh, wow, it's like you read my mind. No, they didn't. They're lying to you. You see, only God knows what's in your heart. And sometimes God will tell secrets to his prophets, and they will tell them. And so these, these were sons of prophets. They were prophets themselves. Elisha was a prophet. Elijah was a prophet. Everybody knew what was happening. Everybody knew. Xander? What if, what if it was a fortune teller that was a prophet? Fortune tellers are not prophets because no fortune teller ever gives God the glory for what they do. And no prophet would ever take the glory from God. No prophet would ever do that. If they did, they're a false prophet. And you know what would happen in the Bible with a false prophet? They were killed. They were put to death. Because God does not tolerate false prophets. And so they, they said to Elisha, did you know that the, God's going to take your master away from you? Yeah, I know. Don't say anything about it. And then Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. Stay here in Bethel. I'm going on to Jericho. And Elisha said, I'm not leaving you. I am not leaving you. And so they both went on to Jericho. 
And in Jericho, there were the sons of the prophets again. And the sons of the prophets all came to Elisha. And they wanted to tell Elisha, hey, we're hearing from God here. Do you know that God is going to take your master away from you? And Elisha said, yeah, I know. Don't say anything about it. Don't say anything about it. Elijah said, I'm going over to the Jordan River. I'm going to cross over the Jordan River. You stay here. Elisha said, I'm not leaving you. I'm going with you wherever you go. And so they went to the Jordan River. Now the Jordan River is right next to Jericho. So the sons of the prophets came out and they watched. And Elijah, Elijah took that cloak that was on him and he rolled it up and he struck the water of the river and the river stopped flowing. Over here on this side, up river, the water stopped flowing. And over here on the other side, downstream, that just kept going and dry land appeared. How is this possible? Because with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. God can do anything. He can do a miracle if he needs to. All right. So the two walked across the river on dry ground. Now, who has a Bible and would like to read this morning? Who has a Bible and would like to read this morning? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? It's, if you have your Bible, 2 Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2. You want to read? Go ahead and read verse 9 and 10, please. separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven, and Elisha saw it. And he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And he saw him no more. Okay, so two things. Elijah knew that Elisha wanted something because he wouldn't leave him. He said, What can I do? Ask, ask me anything. What can I do for you? Elisha said, I want a double portion of your spirit. That is, the works that God did in you, I want him to be able to do twice that in me. Now, that was not an easy thing to ask. And that's what Elijah told me. He said, that's, that, you're asking me a hard thing. Did you know that God is not afraid if we ask him the hard things? God's not afraid of that because there's nothing that God can't do. Ask God the hard things. Have faith in your heart. And he said, here's how you'll know that you'll get it. If you see me when I'm taken from you, you'll know that you'll get it. And all of a sudden, the whirlwind came. World, chariots of fire. Horses of fire. And it came and it took Elijah. And Elijah went up in the whirlwind. Elijah was taken up into heaven alive. He was the second person never to die. And reading on, and he took hold of, this is talking about Elisha, and he took hold of his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. And he took up the cloak of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. Then he took the cloak of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water saying, where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? Now he wasn't asking a question. He wasn't doubting. 
He was making a proclamation. He, Where is the Lord? The God of Elijah. And he struck the water. And just like what had happened to Elijah, the water split in two. And Elisha walked over on dry ground. And he, when he had struck the water, the water was parted to one side and to the other, and Elisha went over. Now the sons of the prophets, when the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho saw him opposite them, he said, they said, the spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed on the ground before him. Now the sons of the prophets didn't believe. When Elisha told him that God had taken up Elijah in a whirlwind, they didn't believe that. When God, when uh, Elisha told them that God had taken them up alive, that alive, God had taken Elijah up alive into heaven, they didn't believe that. And they said to him, "Here's fifty strong men. Let let us go over and try to find the body of your master." And Elisha said, "Don't go." But they insisted. They kept um, let us go, let us go. Come on, we can find him. Come on, we can find him. Finally said, Elisha, okay, go. Go, just go. Three days later, uh, three days they searched for the body of Elijah. They couldn't find it. Why? He was up in heaven. God took him alive up into heaven. So they came back and they told Elisha, we couldn't find the body. Elisha said, didn't I tell you not to go? But the Spirit of God rested on Elisha. Remember before when I was saying that the soldiers had disrespected Elijah? Yeah. You don't disrespect the prophet of God? More on that. Elisha. Elisha was just in Jericho just a few days and all of a sudden he began doing miracles. They had a problem with the water there and Elisha prayed to God and a miracle was done. But then as he was leaving, now Jericho sits in a very deep valley. It sits right, on the, uh, right near the shores of the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea is the lowest place on earth. And big mountains surround Jericho. And as Elisha was leaving Jericho. Now, Elisha must have been a bald guy because a bunch of boys came out and they started mocking him. Go up, Baldy! Go up, Baldy! Go up! Climb on up, Baldy! Climb on up! And they just kept mocking him and making fun of him. Go on, Baldy! Go, Baldy! Go, Baldy! Go, Baldy! The Bible says that Elisha turned around and he cursed them in the name of the Lord. And immediately, two mother bears came out of the woods and killed 42 of those boys. God doesn't mess around. God does not take it when we disrespect his prophets. He will not allow us to disrespect the prophets because when we do that, we're disrespecting him. But, and as we're not going to cover it in our lessons, but it, I, I encourage you to read your Bibles. I encourage you because you're going to see that God did so many miracles. Just real quick, let me tell you about one of the miracles. Piece of metal. If you drop a piece of metal in water, is it going to sink or is it going to float? Xander, is it going to sink or is it going to float? Metal is going to float. You think so? Have you ever seen metal float? No, you haven't. Does metal sink or float? It sinks. It sinks right to the bottom. The guy was using a, he was chopping wood with an axe, and the head of the axe slipped off and fell into the water. It was deep water. And he called Elisha over. He said, "Oh, please help me. I this this isn't even my axe. I borrowed it." Elisha said. Where did it fall in? He showed him where it fell in. Elisha took a branch and threw it into the water, and the axe floated to the surface. The axe had floated to the surface. That doesn't happen. 
Despite what Xander said, that doesn't happen. Metal doesn't float. But it does when God gets involved, when God does a miracle. And God did many miracles through Elisha, and I want you to familiarize yourselves with Elisha. Okay, that's all I have for you guys today. Let's go ahead and bow our heads. Uh, actually, before I do that, let me, let me just total up here some more. Oh, let's see, who are my participants? She participated. She participated. She did. She did. She did. She did. She did. He did. She did. She did. She did. He did.